Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. So for today's video, I did a little eye swatch video with the Menagerie Cosmetics Killer Per Palette. It looks like this in case you haven't seen it. It's grungy and cute and fall, and I, I really like the color story for the most part. I will talk more about colors that I don't necessarily like about it, but for the most part, I really like it. I also touched on a little, not an issue, but just it was brought to my attention that there is discrepancy on if the formula has changed or not. Um, a lot of people were asking me if I think it's changed because Amy from Amy Loves Makeup thinks hers is different and I will talk about that as well. I don't really have much to say in the intro just because I talk about pretty much everything throughout the video. I will say I already started editing my eye swatches because I wanted to kind of look back on myself doing them before I film my intro and outro and there are some times where I lean forward while I'm applying the <laughs> stupid shadows to my lid and I get slow slightly out of focus, but I don't feel like I ever get so blurry that it looks awful or anything. You can still see the colors and how they apply and the smoothness and things like that. So yeah, I don't really have anything to say in this intro other than that, so let's just move on to the meat of the video because it's, it's a lot. <laughs> Hello, I look crazy right now. I just got back from the gym a little while ago and I'm gonna shower and stuff, but I figured maybe I'll do my eye swatches and stuff before that so that I can make a big mess and just clean it up and then I'll just turn it into a regular look afterwards instead of, I don't know, you know what I mean. So we just have to talk about some stuff first just because when I uploaded my first impressions the other day I was super excited because I'm really excited about this palette. It's just, it's very grungy and I really like it. But I had some of you commenting on that video, commenting on my Instagram post, DMing me, not like a ton of you, but a fair enough amount that I felt like I needed to say something. Um, I guess Amy Loves Makeup uploaded her first impressions the same day, and I actually just finished watching it finally. I had a chance to watch it today. The day that I'm filming this is the day after I uploaded the first impressions, but I know it'll be a few days in between uploads. But I noticed that, well, let me start over. You guys, the way you were talking about her video made it seem like she had the most atrocious time, that her swatches were absolutely awful, that the formula was way different. When I watched her video, I didn't really get that impression. I felt like maybe she was disappointed in some of the shades and she was skeptical about some of the things, but it didn't seem like she absolutely hated it or anything like that. So that made me feel good because it made me feel crazy and it honestly made me feel like you guys were questioning what I was saying which really bothered me because I will tell you if I don't like something or if I feel like something's different. But I will say, I just spent some time before turning on the camera while I watched her video. I took all of my other palettes and I was just sitting here and just kind of touching and feeling and swatching. And truly, I feel like my palette feels the same as other Menagerie palettes. And if anything, what she kept, she was comparing it with her Whale Song palette, which I love this palette. I love all of my Menagerie palettes. She was comparing it a lot to this one. So I gave my Whale Song some extra look and some extra love and thought. And if anything, out of all of these palettes, I feel like the Whale Song one feels the most different in the sense that it's extra kick up -y, it's extra pigmented, and I don't know. And another thing I wanted to point out is most of these are lighter tones, they're neutrals, they're not those bright pigmented like purples and blues and things like that. So it's hard to really compare like these light nude shades with like darker blues, you know what I mean? Things are gonna be, I don't know. Let me try to put it into different terms. Obviously, I'm not a chemist. I don't formulate makeup. I don't do anything like that. But I've just noticed in my years of playing with makeup, sometimes even with the same brand's formula, a nude shade and lighter shades or even like warm shades are gonna sometimes feel different than like cool tone shades. Or sometimes they will just apply different or anything like that. And another thing about me is I don't, I don't know. I don't do a whole lot of like finger swatches. That's not really my thing. I personally don't judge a palette based on how it's going to swatch. I care about how it's going to perform on the eyes. And for me, the so far at least, the Killer Purr performed the same on my eyes as all my other palettes. Again, if anything, the Whale Song one is the most different to me because it's very, very pigmented. It requires just a little bit more caution because it's insanely pigmented and none of these are bad things. And I'm not even saying Amy Loves Makeup is wrong at all. 
at all. She could have gotten a different palette. She could just be having a different experience. We all have different opinions and I don't know, we all use different brushes. We all do different everything. We just have different opinions. So I don't think she's wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. I just think we're having our own opinions and I felt like I needed to express mine a little bit more just because I felt like some of you were questioning me and I didn't like that. And another thing I wanted to do is I took my Feral palette and I wanted to quickly show you some swatches in comparison with the Feral of tones that are more similar because, again, let me give an example. Let me take like, I don't know, let me just take the blue here and I'm just going to grab, I don't know, I'll grab the other blue and I'm going to swatch them right next to each other. To me, they both look really good. This one's a bit brighter just because it is a brighter blue. But then on the other hand, if I take one of these like blue colors, I'm just going to take this kind of teal color and I'm going to take it next to this brown. Like they're not going to look the same as a swatch because the brown's lighter. It's lighter in tone. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's hard to compare the Whale Song to this palette because the Whale Song's a completely different color story. However, I am going to take this brown here from the Feral with the shade Main, which is on the bottom of my Killer Purr palette, and I'm gonna take Alpha from the Feral, and I'm gonna take Antelope from the Killer Purr palette. And I'm gonna swatch everything, and I feel like everything looks pretty much the same level of pigmentation to me. I, it, they all feel the same. I don't know. I just, I felt like I was going crazy because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like people were doubting me and I was like, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not looking at this hard enough, but I just spent a good amount of time just playing and touching. I feel like my shimmers feel like menagerie shimmers. My mattes feel like menagerie mattes. It's possible Amy maybe got a dud. I don't know, but I just know I'm happy with it so far. I'm currently in the process of filming my three looks. I've already filmed my first look, so I have two more to go, and I'm about to film my eye swatches now, so that'll give us even more of a inside opinion of how I feel because I'm going to really play with all these shades individually. But so far, I truly don't feel like my palette's different. Just to answer those questions of do I feel like the formula is different, I personally don't thus far. I will update if I change my mind, but I feel like everything's fine on my end. Okay, so let's get into the eye swatches now. Um, the way I do things is I'll prime my eye with my Sigma Eyeshadow Base and Ignite every time. I'm going to blend the shade in my crease first, and then I'm going to take an eyeshadow brush just to pack the shade across the lid, just so we can see how things blend, how they look on the eye, how they pack, all that good stuff. I'm going to try to jump around. Like, I'm going to do the two shimmers at the same time. I'll do, like, these two at the same time. These two at the same time. I'm going to try to keep them relatively similar, just so we can see how they compare tone-wise. And, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. I know this was a little bit ranty. <laughs> I'm not trying to come across as ranty at all. I just wanted to get all of my thoughts on the table for you. So yeah, let's do some swatches now. I do not have 12 identical brushes. I try my best to use the same type of brush-ish. And I also don't have one of those hair donuts that you can use to scrub your brush clean. That's what you guys tell me all the time to get, but I still haven't picked one up. So I'm going to try my best just to use similar brushes. I know which brushes work for me. I'm not too worried about it. Um, obviously, scientifically, I should use the exact same brushes for all of these shades, but I also just, I know which brushes work for me. The whole point is just to see how they blend, so that's, that's how it's gonna be. Let's get to eye swatching. <laughs> all right, hello. Oh, I cannot see, so I don't have my glasses on anymore. I figured we would do these shimmers first just because there's only two of them. The way I do my shimmer swatches is I will use no glitter primer to start. I'm just gonna pack the shadow across the lid. At the end, I'll just kind of buff it with a blending brush, but I personally don't use shimmers in the crease, and I know most of you don't either. It's more important to see how it applies. So I'm just gonna pack it with no glitter primer, and then I will use glitter primer, go over it with glitter primer, and then layer it again just to see how much more it pops. So Let's start with Prowl. I'm just, again, just gonna go right in on my primed eye. That is not set because I like my base a little tacky. So far, these shimmers seem exactly how, I don't know, I'm used to Menagerie shimmers. They're a little chunkier. They aren't the most like insanely metallic impactful, like Give Me Glow, for instance, but they still work fine. I have a little bit of fallout, but that's also not uncommon for Juvia's Place. I mean, menagerie. I'm going crazy. Using the exact same brush and the exact same side of the brush, I'm just going to take a little of my NYX glitter primer, pop it right over top. I personally always use glitter primer with shimmers. I never ever go in with nothing, 
but I figured I would still show both ways because that's what I've been doing with my eye swatches. Just gonna layer right on top and it definitely pops a bit more. Just gonna take this blending brush just to smooth out the edge. The shimmers usually smooth out pretty easy. They don't stay too chunky in the crease or anything. So yeah, that's the shade Prowl. We're gonna go in with Lioness now. I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm just gonna flip it over to the clean side just to save on brushes, you know. Going right in across the lid. That's kind of what it looks like just by itself. I hope I didn't cover up the camera. Oopsie. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of glitter primer again. Just going to pop that all over the lid. Dip directly into Linus again. And go right over top of it. This is why I go in with glitter primer. It just makes everything so much more impactful. Ugh, it's my favorite. Again, just going to smooth out that edge. I'm using the same blending brush because I don't really care about the colors mixing on these. It's, it's not going to make a difference in the sense. So yeah, this is what those two shimmers look like. In the past, I have taken off my eyeshadow and shown you what the stain value is. Instead, I'm just going to show you if there is staining. If there's no staining, I'll just turn the camera back on when it's time to do the next eye. So I'm going to take these off and then we will start working on these mattes. Right, I'm back. I didn't get any stainage from those shimmers and now my eyes are primed. So I was thinking on one of my eyes, this eye, I'm going to use Drought and then on the other eye, I'm going to use Chase. They don't really look the same, but I just figured those would be good ones to pair together. I'm gonna go in with that brush I used to buff out those shimmers, but I wiped it off a lot. There's no more sparkle on this brush. So I'm just gonna go in with Drought. Oh, that's another thing. Amy said her palette didn't have kick up. Mine has kick up when I tip my brush in. So again, I don't know if she just got a different palette than me, but my palette definitely has kick up, just like Menagerie shadows always do. By the way, I meant to mention that earlier. So I'm just working on blending this one through the crease. This is a shade that I'm iffy about, not because I think it's a bad shade. I just think I don't love playing with this kind of a color. I don't know. I know Amy was super kind of intrigued with this shade and happy with it. <laughs> so uh, that's just another thing with different preferences. So I talked about this in my first impression. I was so iffy on it and then I just kind of came to the conclusion of maybe I just don't like this color. <laughs> So just working that through the crease, everything seems pretty smooth. It's just a lighter color. I'm gonna take this packing brush right here. I'm just going to stamp this all across the lid. I actually haven't used this on the lid at all yet. I've only used it in the crease. So we will see. This is a shade I just don't see myself really making the focal point of my looks. But again, it's not like a bad shade. So that's kind of what that shade looks like by itself. Let's move into the shade Chase now. <laughs> I'm picking up the shade Chase here and you can see there's lots of kick up when I tap my brush in. I'm just going right in. I don't think I've used this shade on my eyes yet. However, I have used it as a blush a couple times and I quite enjoyed it actually. I thought it was a cute color. It's just a nice peach. Again, it's not super dark. So if you wanted it to be extremely, extremely pigmented, you need to build it up a little bit. But it's just because it's a light shade. It's not because the quality's bad or anything. And now I'm just gonna take that brush I just used, but flip it over to the clean side. And just work on packing this all across my lid. That's kind of what this shade looks like now. Again, not a shade, like neither of these shades are shades I can see myself just slapping on my eye and going. Like these are not standalone shades for me. These would be like to help blend out the shades at the very, very edge of my eye look. Nothing, nothing too crazy, as I always say. So yeah, I'm going to wipe these off and we will continue. I feel like I'm going to try to not blow off the kick up in my palette. I just want you guys to be able to see at the end how much kick up there is because it's a very menagerie kick up if, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to take these off. I'll show you if there's any staining and then we'll come back for some more. Right, I'm back. I didn't notice any staining from those two shades and I didn't think I would just because they're very light. So now on this side I'm going to go in with Cub and then the next side I'm going to go in with Main. I just felt like it was appropriate to put those two guys right next to each other. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna dip right in. I'm gonna go into Cub first. Again, there's Kick Up in the pan. 
I'm just gonna start swirling this. I've used this in my crease a couple times now. Well, I guess I've only done two looks. So yeah, literally a couple times now. And I mean, it's just like a, a warm, light brown. It's nothing crazy, but I still think it's cute because it's a little mustardy. And you guys know I love a good mustard shadow. With this shade, I don't find I have to like spend a ton of time building up like those first two shades. I'm gonna go in with my shadow brush now and just pack it all across my lid. Again, this is another shade I can't really see myself just going in with by itself and calling it a day. Just because for me, it's just not unique enough. I'm not just a brown eye shadow and go kind of person, but it works great as like a transition shade, you know? So that's what this one looks like. Still nice and smooth and blends nicely. Let's just move on to the next shade now. I'm gonna go into Maine and we're just gonna see what happens. As we do like start getting into slightly deeper shades, like this one's a little bit deeper than what we just used, I like to go in at little bits at a time rather than take a ton on my brush like with those light shades, just because I don't want it to be come too much too fast. And now I'm just, just gonna take that same brush, flip it over to the clean side and pack it all across the lid. They definitely play very similar on the eye. I'm the kind of person that probably would have been cool voting for a different shade versus both of these shades, but they do have a difference. This one's just slightly darker. It's a little bit browner, whereas this one I feel like is a little more yellowy, but they both behaved fine. They blended out good, and I will let you know if if I have any staining, and then we'll move on. I am back. Again, I didn't really notice staining with those two shades either, but again, they're more on the lighter shots lighter side and they're very brown tone, so I didn't really expect them to stain. So this next one's gonna be a weird pairing. I'm gonna be doing the hunt on this eye and then I'm gonna take this taupey color antelope on this eye just because I really wanna put these two browns together and then I really wanna put the blue and the green together. So I know it's a weird pairing, but it's just because that's just the way it needs to be. So let's just dip right into Let's go into the hunt. Just taking that orange. Again, I'm getting some kick up. I'm gonna tap my brush off. I played with this shade for my first look in my 3LX1 palette, and I really enjoyed playing with this orange. And you guys know I'm not an orange person. I just, I really like the tone of it. I don't know what it is. It's a little rusty. I feel like with Menagerie's mattes, for the most part, unless they're really, really dark, um, it's really easy to get away with just throwing one matte in the crease. Like, I feel like you don't have to have to use a million shadows to help blend it out. I feel like these always blend pretty nicely. Going to jump right in with a packing brush. I do personally wish there were more shimmers in this palette. I definitely prefer more mattes than shimmers, but I'm sad that it's only two shimmers because I am a shimmer fiend. I wish there was at least two more. I think two more shimmers, I would have been like perfectly content. All right, that's that orange. It's looking really cute. And now I'm gonna dip right into antelope. <laughs> and let's just, let's just see what happens, shall we? Lots of kick up with that one, okay. I played with this one in my first impressions, and I mentioned that I really liked the tone of it. I just thought it was pretty, because it's not totally just a gray, but it's also not a brown. It's just a really good kind of taupe. I don't play with these kinds of colors too often. But they make a really good shade for mimicking like an actual shadow, so that's pretty cool. Gonna take that same brush I just used, but I'm going to flip it over to the other side and pack this all across the lid. All right, this is those. This is those. These are those two eyes swatched now. I feel like everything looks pretty good. This is a shade that, just because it's getting a little bit deeper, I probably would like go in with another shade just to help blend out the edges, but by itself it's, it's doing pretty okay. 
So I'm gonna wipe these off. I feel like these ones have a chance at staining my eyes, but we will see. I will show you if there's any staining. All right, here I am after wiping those off. I feel like there is still a little bit of orange kind of peeking on my lid, and even a little bit of that grayish taupeyishness. So now that we're getting a little deeper, there is a little bit more stainage, and I accidentally already blew away my fallout, by the way, so my kick up plan wasn't happening anymore. So instinctual. Okay, so I'm going to prime my eyes, and we will work on, I guess, probably those browns, and then we'll do the blue and the green last. All right, so here we are primed again. I'm gonna be doing Pride, the more brown-based one on this eye, and Mighty Roar, the more purple-based brown on this eye. And same deal, just gonna blend it through the crease, pack it on the lid, all that good, good stuff. I think I've used both of these shades now in my crease. I know for sure I've used Mighty Roar, the purpley one, but I can't remember if I used the brown in my three looks video yet. I know I will if I haven't. I plan on using every shade. Ooh, my eyes are getting tired of this. <laughs> All right, just gonna take a shadow brush now. Lots of pigments. I'm gonna pack this across my lid now. All right, so this is what that brown looks like. I feel like for it being like pretty deep, I feel like it blended out by itself pretty, pretty well. I'm impressed with that. So now I'm gonna go in with Mighty Roar, that purpley one. And we will just kinda see how that one goes by itself. I'm interested in seeing how these two pair on the eyes, like, like how they play on the eyes. Wonder how much of a difference they actually make. I feel like this brush is awful. It's very scratchy. Let me find a better brush really quick. Okay, I found one that's softer and more my speed. Ugh. It would have done a fine job, but it was like borderline hurting my eye. I need to just throw that Morphe one away. I really want to throw all my Morphe ones away, to be honest with you. I'm probably just going to wait until they self-destruct on their own. All right, it's going to use that same packing brush to pack this purple across the lid. Definitely getting some fallout with this shade, but it's also a very pigmented shade. So that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, I have a, a lot more fallout with that shade than any of the others so far. I feel like these do look pretty different on the eye. This one definitely plays just brown. This one to me looks a lot more like plummy. So I'm cool with having both of these in the palette, but I still stand by. I feel like, I don't know if we needed both of those. And I also would have been fine without drought just because I'm not really a fan of that light yellow. I don't know what it is. I just, I guess I just don't like those banana tones. So yeah, lots of kick up again. I'm going to wipe these off. Again, there's a high chance of these staining because they're dark. And then we will do the green and blue. I'm excited for this. I feel like I have a little bit of lingering just pigment on the eye, but it's not as stained as I thought it was going to be. I thought they would stain a lot more, but I am gonna go prime my eyes now and then we will work on the green and blue. All right, I'm back again for the last swatches. I'm gonna do Baobab the green on this eye and Watering Hole the tealish blue on this eye. And again, same deal, blend it through the crease, pack it on the lid. And there's lots of kick up in the pan from that green. I love the tone of this green. I think it's so unbelievably pretty. It's so just, I don't know, mossy. I really, really like it. And I'm kind of dipping in slowly just because I have played with this green before and I feel like it's pretty pigmented. So I don't want to, I don't know. I, I just want it to be able to blend out on my <laughs> crease by itself as much as possible. So I'm just dipping in a little bits at a time and building it up until it's the way I want it to look. Ooh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna go right in with a packing brush now to pop that all across my lid. I love this green. This is a green I could totally see myself just plopping on my eye and leaving on if I ever did that. I feel like I never do that. I either do a full face and film it or I wear nothing. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take a watering hole and pop right in there. Oh, I feel like that's a lot of pigment, I'm nervous. I haven't blended this one through the crease yet. All I did was pop it a little bit on my lid. I feel like this is so creamy and pigmented. I love it. It's such a pretty shade. 
This is why I like doing eye swatches, because I feel like finger swatches just don't always show the full truth. These are performing beautifully. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so this is those two shades. Pigmented, blended. <laughs> They're doing their thing. I look like a crazy person. I guess I'm gonna go shower, do my makeup. I'm probably just gonna throw one of these shades on my eyes just as like a lid shade for the day and to be able to take pictures with something like that. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. And I guess that's about it. We'll chat some more at the end. All right, so that's it and I am back. I will have all the details of what's on my face down in the description box. For my eyeshadow, all I did was blend the Baobab shade all over my lid, lid increase and then I just used Cub to blend out that very edge. I didn't do anything crazy at all. It's basically just one shadow, but like I said, I'll have all of the details down below if you are curious. So yeah. I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit here, but like I was trying to say before, and like I still believe, um, I don't think Amy's wrong, I don't think I'm wrong. I personally don't feel like my palette is any different, but that's not to say that Amy doesn't feel like hers is different. We all have our own opinions, and I would never say that somebody else is wrong because they think something different about a palette than I do. And on the flip side, I would not appreciate anyone accusing me of not thinking that my palette is different when it's supposed to be or anything like that. Literally, unless Menagerie Cosmetics themselves comes forward and says, this palette is different, I'm gonna continue believing that mine is the same that I always expect because mine performed exactly how I expected to. I didn't notice any differences. Like I said, if anything, out of all the palettes, the one that I noticed to be different is Whale Song because it is extra creamy and extra pigmented. But, my Killer Purr feels the same as everything else, and I'm happy with it. That's all that matters. We all have our own opinions. I won't discredit you, so don't discredit me. That's all I'm saying. I hope you enjoyed it, though. I know this video was longer, very informative. I hope you liked it, and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them, but I feel like I covered pretty much everything I needed to cover. If you made it to the end, just leave any kind of safari animal, whether it's a lion or a zebra or anything like that. So leave me some kind of safari animal. <laughs> if you enjoyed this eye swatch video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. My Three Looks Win palette with this will be up very, very soon. I think it's either the next upload or the one after it, something like that. It's coming very soon. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Butebean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe. I am posting most days here as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.